What is up everybody and welcome back to the Maths Guide. Today we're going to be looking at the top five questions that are going to come up in the 2025 SAT papers. Let's go. Okay, so this first question is a reflection question. Now it says here, here is a triangle on a grid. We can see it says mirror line. This is a really big piece of information. Then it says draw the reflection of the triangle in the mirror line. And very crucially, it says use a ruler, which I can't do today, but you will do in your test. So when we are drawing a reflection, we are not simply translating the shape. Translating the shape means we will simply move the existing shape as it is to somewhere else on the graph. It's like that. That is simply translating the shape. But we're not doing that. We are reflecting the shape. So what we need to do is we need to make a point of all of the vertices of this shape. So if we do the first one here, and then we'll measure how close it is to the mirror line. We have one, two squares from the mirror line. So its reflected point will be one, two points from the mirror line on the other side. Let's put our vertice in place. Now I can do that to another corner. Let's do this top one. And I'll work out that it's one, two, three, four squares from the mirror line. So I'm going to have to go one, two, three, four squares from the mirror line on the other side. And then finally, my last corner, and I'm going to use a different color to help you see this one clearly. And we're going to go one, two, three, four, five jumps from the mirror line. So I need to go one, two, three, four, five jumps on the other side. Let's tidy this up a little bit and we can see our points in place. Now all I need to do is simply use a ruler to connect these dots or connect these vertices on my graph. And there we go, one reflected shape. Question two is an addition question and this will 100% come up in paper one. So let's look how to solve it. We have 689 plus 38, so I'm gonna simply use column method, put my 689 in place and I'm adding 30. Eight. Now, we can see I have made a mistake already. This 38 is in the wrong place because I'm at the moment saying this three is in the hundreds column, making it a value of 300, which is not right. So what we're gonna to do to help us is put our ones, tens, and hundreds on the top of our question so that when I now put my numbers in, I can see 38 is made up of three tens, eight ones. Now I'm ready to begin. Let's start with our smallest value. And in this case, that is the ones. 8 plus 9 is 17. Now I can't simply put 17 into the answer row because it's only for one digit. So I'm going to understand that my 17 is broken down into a 10 and a 7. So I can put my 7 in the answer row of the 1s and hold my 110 in the 10s column ready to be added up. Now my 10s is an 8, a 3 and a 1 which equals 12. So I add my 12 just like we did before. And then finally in my hundreds, a six, and my new one is a seven. So 689 plus 38 is 727. A couple of tips, always put your column titles and make sure you leave room for these extra numbers that you're gonna roll over. Question three, Lila plays basketball. This graph shows how many points she scores in her first three games. So we can see game one, game two, and game three. After four games, Lila has scored a total of 25 points. Complete the graph, use a ruler. So it's saying that after all four games, we have a total of 25 points. So we essentially have a missing number question. We have the value of these three games, but we don't know the value of the fourth game yet. So let's add up game one, two, and three. We have the first graph goes somewhere here between six and eight, so it must be seven. Second graph goes somewhere between the four and six, so it must be five. And the third game goes all the way to 10, so it must be 10. So I have seven plus five, which is 12, plus two equals 22. So the value of these games here is 22. But we know the total is 25, so I can simply do 25, subtract my 22, equals three, to learn how many points she scored in game four. Or I could do 22 and then just simply count on to 25. 22, 23, 24, 25. We counted on three, same answer. But I'm not finished. I need to fill in the graph like it says. So I'm gonna draw a bar graph next to my bars, making sure I am not touching the bar before. 
There we go, shade it in if I want. Correct answer. Question four, 72 divided by three, and again, a division question like this will 100% come up in paper one. So what method am I gonna use? That's right, I'm gonna use bus stop method, put my 72 inside, and my three on the outside. Now I'm gonna use short division, but some of you might still be using long addition, that's fine. I'm gonna say, how many threes are there in seven? Well, let's draw some circles. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. How many groups of three can I collect? One group and two groups. So I have two, and how many left over? One on its own, carry that into the next area. Then threes into 12, threes into 12, go four times. So my answer to how many, to 72 divided by three, is 24. Question five, now this is a thinker. Olivia is thinking of a number. My number, and then she's given us some points, is greater than 236, is less than 245, has a three in the tens place, and is an even number. What number is Olivia thinking? Well, let's go through the options then. So we say it's greater than 236. So we have 237, 238, 239, 240, 241, 242, 243, 244, but it's less than 245, so we know it can't be 245. Now it says, has a three in the tens place. So let's look at all the tens places and select the ones that have a three. So I have a three here in this tens place, in this one, and in this one, but none of the others, so we can get rid of those. And finally, the last point says, is an even number, so which one of these is an even number? Well, I only have one, and it'd be 238. Now, the way we did this is we just went through them step by step and physically wrote down the numbers and then just selected ones that still were relevant based on the information we were given later. It's really important to not just give up because it looks confusing. Use all the skills you know, and the first skill we can all do is write down the numbers that it could possibly be from the first clue. And there we go. That is five of the most common questions that are going to come up in the 2025 SATS papers. Hopefully this video has been helpful for you. If it was, then please think about giving us a thumbs up and subscribing to the channel. We make content like this every day. But for now, guys, see you in another video. Peace out.